I'm walking along the river in Bridport. I'm just doing some shopping here and then heading off to Abbotsbury to have a look at that place in the castle. I say my after the five miles yesterday, which is fairly grueling and had to rush in places, which I don't like to do. My feet are actually hurting just from doing the shopping. Uh, they do have a waitrose here, but the waitrose is rather limited. It makes me hope for a makes you do the impossible, hope for a Marks and Spencers, and I'm not a fan of either shop, but interestingly, though it's miles out of town, well not miles, but it's a long schlep, Morrison's do a much bigger free from range than Waitress, which is not what I expect. Um, but yes, yeah, so... Uh, if you're going to Bridport, this this weekend is the Bridport Carnival. I don't know if I'm going to see any of it because a lot of it is uh, parades in the evening and of course lovely bus service. And I don't really fancy walking back, so I don't know what to do. I'm half tempted to because on Sunday there's a torch lit procession, which sounds all very wonderfully Wicker Man, um, to the beach. To which point they set fire to the mayor. No, I, I don't know what they do at the bit. Apparently dancing. But, yeah, it's... I'm half thinking of moving to Brit, the, the nearby campground, Brit Valley, I think it's called. Which I had a look on the way here, on because the bus goes pa- directly past it. It's very convenient for the bus. But it's... Uh, Right in the middle of a sort of uh, very touristy conurbation, but uh, and uh, kind of like, well, it's like an overspill of Bridport. I mean, obviously West Bay seems to be kind of different, but it's not. It's part of Bridport, but it's you know it's kind of like the Bridport Sir Mayor Seaside version. And whereas Bridport itself is quite obviously quite quirky and posh and arty, but not all of it. Obviously Morrison's and they have a little here and stuff like that. It's a uh, very, uh, yeah, th- there's a whole s- suite of very quirky, interesting shops, very hipsterish, all the way down South Street. Whereas if you go East Street, and the other street, which I assume is West Street, but it could be East, could be a continuation of East Street, I don't know, uh, where you've got the waitress and all that lot. And they're all kind of a bit more what you'd expect from anywhere, you know, the works, boots, super drug, blah, blah. But a lot, Superdog was closed, and a lot of the places were closed because of flood damage. They just had flooding here during the flash floods. The one that I think I managed to miss on Tuesday, there was warnings of flash flooding when we did that, and obviously, I'm trying to take my pack off. Obviously, when I. Oh, that's better got all my shopping with me and I'm, I'm feeling the pain and I need to sit down and rest my feet. But obviously the... I must obviously, obviously stop saying obviously. But yeah, the... Um, you know, I was... I managed to skip it because I was on the bus at the time. You know, and so there was sort of storms early part of last week, Monday, Tuesday. I managed to miss most of them, so I, I got the storm yesterday but that was a, that wasn't really a storm that was more of a mist and sort of rain but it wasn't like a big flash flood like like that it wasn't a big thunderstorm although i never saw any thunder and lightning but yeah it wasn't a big sort of deluge it was more sort of mini deluge with wind whipping it into your face and uh, obviously my very make do plastic bag type packer mac the cheap one doesn't really the mustard and it just sounds like you're in a you're sailing it's flat 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 you're being deafened by flapping plastic so yeah that wasn't really a good part of it but the rest of it was good last yesterday shame my feet are so fucked oh they hurt they started hurting when i was having i had um lunch here at the chip shop on that sort of uh, op- just opposite, I was nearby Waitrose, just opposite side, and um, yeah, it's uh, but it's, it's interesting the contrast. As you walk down South Street, you see all these sort of antique, but sort of cool antique 
and barbers and you know hipster cafe type places and it's all like ooh this is this is very hip and happening whereas yeah the main street is kind of very what you'd expect very Bournemouth Bournemouth can I just say one thing Bournemouth so yeah it's it's uh but it's, it's a nice place and i've got to come back here because i'm ordering a new battery because my other big battery has pretty much died it's gotten really weird it was i, I got it to charge at the shop the shop does charging a golden gap for two pounds and it was charging from uh something like 10 o'clock to 7 p.m and it only half charged and that's for a supposed device that is, it's doing weird shit like with the, with the solar as well. Um, for a device, for a device that's supposed to be fast charging, and I was using a fast charger. It's yeah, I think it's on its way out. Well, I've dropped it too many times. You shouldn't drop batteries, kids. Don't drop batteries, kids. But um, yeah, I tried to avoid dropping it. It's nice. It's hard to do so. Um, it was in a bag or something. And he gets banged, but the yeah, so I don't know. It's a shame, I've had it quite a few years though. Um, so I've, I've done something I've never ever done before, which is order something on holiday. This could go very, very wrong. Um, and I've ordered uh, interestingly, Amazon's app is so shit. Um, for this, you'd think that with you know, and I accidentally have Prime because I got the free the 99p Prime before I went, I forgot to cancel it. So I was like, well, I may as well utilize that. You know, get some of my money's worth, and then it find out that oh, you know, little you know, Chidduck Post Office in you know, the spa, no, you know, you select that. And he goes, this cannot be delivered to this location. Okay, you know, because I put in the whole location, and it went, yes, we can deliver, you know, tomorrow to this, to this location, and then you go, okay, well, I put the holiday park in. I was going to ask, I was going to order it, and then ask. It was a bit naughty, but I was going to say, well, okay, for you know, you can you get, get you know, keep some post for me. I'm sure it would be fine, but. You know, it, you know uh, I said no. I was like, that's weird. And then I tried. Uh, I thought, well, okay, Bridport then. And I tried the first Amazon locker. This locker is not working at this location. And I tried the other one. In fact, the one I went past today at Morrison's, which looked very functional for a non, for something that the app says this 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 is not functioning. I eventually I chose a co-op one that worked. So I've got a kind of fifteen minute walk outside of Bridford, Bridport tomorrow. Or Sunday, because um, I could always collect it on the way out with all my shit. Rather not, because that would be a long schlep, extra schlep with all my rucksacks. So I would rather avoid that. But it depends where you know where I end up. You know, if I end up in West Bay, it's going to be something that I can maybe walk to or you know take a bus to. So it's not really that much of a problem. But yeah, certainly. I'm thinking about what to do on Sunday because I quite like the idea of sticking around here maybe an extra day. Um, it really depends on my feet. It really depends on weather availability. Um, as I said, I don't think Sundays. But you've got this added thing of this carnival thing, so maybe they are booked up over over the carnival. I don't know. I would expect a lot of people would go. Before, you know, they've got jobs on Monday, so unless they've got the, you know, unless it's some kind of bank holiday, I don't know about. Um, and that's the one that's, that's end of August anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, people will have to go. So you know, I expect there'll be some space. Not everyone can get work off on Monday, you know. So um, because it goes quite late, unless you're a local. Unless you're a local, um, you know, it goes on till nine o'clock or something like that on the beach. So, you know, it's too late. Or well, the procession, I think the procession, you can get torches from six and the procession starts at seven or eight or something and then it goes on till nine plus, you know. So it's basically, it's have a rave on the beach and that's, that's it must be more of a local thing. Um, well, I could easily walk back from East Bay to West Bay. It's a short distance, um, whereas if I'm still staying at where I am now, not so convenient. So, you know, it, it really depends on how I get on tomorrow with... But then again, if I'm in West Bay, I could do the reverse walk. So, you know, it's not too far. So I might ask, um, find them up and tomorrow and see, or Sunday and, and see if they've got any space. The default answer a lot of the holiday parks is no, uh, even though I can fit anywhere. 
and it's it's rather annoying because there are the camping and caravanning places do keep spaces for walkers uh the holiday parks don't even though there's, you know, there's acres of space being wasted by someone awning or whatever or even not being used at all i mean it's supposed to be completely you only have five spaces left on saturday and i've got i've got one of the last five spaces We'll see what that looks like. I don't even think there's lots of space I could have easily squeezed into. Um, and that's why usually, you know, if you've got a small tent, it's not a problem to drop in on campsites. But that's traditional campsites and uh, camping and caravanning club sites. The holiday parks tend to be a bit more kind of, oh, well, someone's going to obviously want a car and obviously have five trillion kids and obviously grow up. And suddenly have this big demarcation zone around each thing, you know, which is quite funny when I'm I'm in a plot on this little tiny tent. <laughs> it's like you know, could fit ten of me in there. Well, we got ten, you know. Um, but that's how they deal with that. They sort of oh well, that's the space, and so they they get in quotes booked up, but they're not really booked up because there's three meter space around everything, you know, which you don't need for, you know, a small tent, you know. I mean, having done the park, you know, camping next to angry caravanners in Corf Castle, I would say there is some there is some argument for separating caravan people from absolutely everyone because they are angry motherfuckers who are just a you know a real pain in the ass. I mean, you think they're bad on the roads? You should try them in a, in a camping and caravan park. Luckily, the people at the um, were 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 had were part of the ethos of the camping caravan club. Were like, no, sorry, you're fine. You're the reason we exist. We'll always be pro walker and defending me against the caravan people. But they were just like they had these massive cars and these massive motor you know motorhomes or caravans and and they expected to have like five trillion room you know and they got upset at the slightest thing and you're like oh, you are twats really you are twats. Sorry if you're a caravaner, but seriously, the, my experience so far has not been good. You know, possibly worse than mobile home people. You know, because um, I've met some people who are staying in the mobile homes uh, back in, you know, in Preston who were lovely. It was a very nice guy called Tony who was very interested in what I was doing and uh, he was quite cute as well. Um, and he, you know, he was there with his, I assume, I think, fa- oh, his wife and family and uh, was disabled, but was using a stroll, on the strollers and whatever. And we chatted as I walked up to the get the bus out there about being an artist and things like that. So, you know, they weren't all horrible. It's just, you know, my experience in a lot of holiday parks has been um, the campers are fine, the, you know, the caravanners are just... You know, no one likes the caravan people, and the mobile home people can be kind of like somewhere in between. <laughs> you know, they can be very standoffish or very friendly. It's very difficult to know. So, anyway, oh my god, 30 minutes, and I've got to try and get the bus to Abbotsbury. <laughs> I was having a rest, really. But yeah, no, it's, it's nice and red for. Uh, you know, I did some sort of interestingly funky sort of small independent type business stuff going on and some art stuff as well um, it's not really Folkestone level yet but you can see you can see some of it there there was a weird bit of art going up Golden Cap done, done in apparently in something to do with the local primary school I almost drew it thinking it was a natural um, wooden you know I was like that's such a strange shape for a, for a, you know, a fallen tree and I realised oh no it's Joined together, it's some sculpture. I was like, no, oh, I'm not interested now. <laughs> and I went into a gallery here, and I was like, the artist is there, she's talking about her work, and I was like, yeah, I better get out of here, because I just looked, took one look in the work and went, oh dear. Sorry, artists can be very judgmental. <laughs> I was just like, no. I saw another one who's a guy who's doing uh, ink and scalpel drawings. Obviously, basically, they're from old photographs, or they look like old photographs. They look like old, kind of like uh, daguerreotypes. Uh, very realistic, incredibly hyper realistic. 
and he did abstract. The abstracts I really like. I was like, oh, they're interesting. The, you know, I assume he's doing the other stuff for sale, but it's obviously from a photograph. And you know, you know my, I'm not a big fan of people working from, you know, unless you it's somewhere you can't go to, um, or you can't draw, or you can't visit. I think working for photographs is just a bit shit uh, for an artist. I think you've got to go out there and experience the real thing. Because the real thing is always better. I learned that in the lockdown, that the portraits I did, the, on you know, the online stuff we tried to do with uh, live drawing and whatever, it just wasn't the same as something three-dimensional because you get to know the person, you've got the personality of the person coming through, you've got all this you know, extra information you know as they move around and who they are are in that space about the thing in that space and it's much more than just you know oh have I got this line right and the shape and the form it there's all this extra stuff which we pick up as artists so there's extra things that we do um it's not you know feelings and also you know, interaction with the, you know, the subject, you know, whatever it is, and, and, you know, the passage of time, so it's, it's a lot more than just representation. Anyway, I'll shut up now. Yes, I don't like days like today, when the vagaries of limited public transport get in the way of me doing work, because by the time I finished in Bridport, it was like two, two-ish, three, and I was like, oh, I'll go up to Abbotsbury. Their buses, their buses going from Charmouth at sort of seven-ish, so there must be buses coming back. Yes. No. <laughs> well, kind of. I mean, not. I mean, I think the last one from Charmouth is something like close to eight, whereas it turns out the last bus you can get for the for for well. It's not the Bridport part that's the problem. You can get late, later buses to Bridport. What you can't get is the last, for some strange reason, the last bus towards Chidduck and Charmouth Way from Bridport leaves at 6.30. Um, and so what I should have done is done the Abbotsbury stuff first and then headed back. Though, actually, going through... Bridport it looked like the waitrose was shut <laughs> at six o'clock, maybe. So, yeah, it's a because that's what I was thinking. Should I do? You know, should I go to Abbotsbury first and come? Up? So I got to see the Abbotsbury. Uh, well, they call it Hill Fort or Castle. Around around here, they, they can call things castles, and you have expectations of stones, and that is obviously that's why they've changed on the sign say Hill Fort because that's more accurate because I arrived and went oh yes it's that kind of castle like Maiden Castle so it was Earthworks and I was about to do some work when I actually went I'll just double check the timing and I was like ah and so I had to scramble down to the bus stop which of course doesn't have a bus sign which is always fun um, and then realised I actually I just missed the one before but that there was another one and that was the last one and I had half an hour so I sat down and did a a landscape through, <laughs> sitting on the ground looking through a um, I should have put it in the work really looking through a rusty gate because <laughs> that's the only place I could sit down and did did a piece in about 25 minutes or you know it was really half an hour but I actually stopped it just before um, so I could wait for the bus but I was like I know if I stopped and went and worked anywhere else I would get so engrossed with it that I would miss the bus and then I'd be fucking stuck because you know although it's short it's probably a short walk from Bridport to Chidduck it's just something I didn't want to do my feet still hurt so so you know it's not like it's always millions of miles but it's it's you know a fair few miles it's a few miles so it's you know, it's like two. I don't know. Maybe it's not two miles. It's maybe three or four. So you know, it's not an impossible taxi journey or whatever. But as it's carnival time, it's Bridport, Bridport Carnival this weekend. Uh, yeah, I'd rather not rely on taxis during a carnival weekend. That might just disappear, and not be available. So yeah. So what I'm doing is heading back to Sea Town, Golden Cap. And I'll do some work around there. But 
and then get some food later. But the thing is, I think this has sealed my idea that the, the because of that vagaries of the bus, the limited, weirdly one-sided service of the X51 after Britport, that my next move is definitely going to be that way and within that sort of bus area. So I'm thinking of Sunday, either go to West Bay or one of the ones I was considering before I made the jump all the way to Golden Cap. And and the annoying thing is I knew this. I did do this research and then forgot it. (laughs) I did this research back in October and August last year. I knew this stuff. When when it happens, like, oh, yes, last bus, Abbott's Bree, must get here early. You know, so, yeah. It's just... It's the same gate again. Um, For all you gate AMSR people. Exactly. It's quite a lot of people camping in this field. I wonder if it's a carnival or something. Um... Yeah. Oh. Something nice is a lot of people camping in the other fields around. Um, no mobile home camping, maybe, to do with that. But, yes, it's... So, I mean, depending on the carnival, it might be impossible to get a place in West Bay. But what, I, as I said in the previous bit, I would be surprised because... Um, very few people are going to wait around until 9 o'clock at night and then have a drive back home and pack up their tent uh, unless they've got the day off the next day you know. Which, so the likelihood is people will come down on Saturday and the Sunday daytime and then go home um, or you know, if they're staying here for it and go home and miss the torchlight procession which is a bit that I'm interested in and also the procession tomorrow. I might catch some of it. Because I'm planning to walk that way. But obviously because of all of this. I have to make sure I start early. And not piss around on the campsite like I did. And I have done the last couple of days. So it's just frustrating. Because I wanted to do more work. I wanted to get more stuff done. And I, I was just about to do. Try and do something I've never managed to do before. Which is. I was trying to paint the. Paint Humalize, this is the thing. Um, Neolithic earthworks is an interest of mine, but they're impossible to depict because it's just like lumps in the ground, there's nothing. <laughs> so, most of the time, there's nothing there, unless it's stones, you know. Um, but yeah, the sort of earthworks don't really do very much. Maiden Castle is probably big enough that you can. You could, you know, see something in it. But most of the time, it's like, oh, look, it's a bump in the ground. And oh, look, it's a ditch. Right. But I was about to try and do a... But the thing is, I was being blasted by the wind. So I walked around the site trying to find somewhere that wasn't blasted by the wind. So I was thinking, oh, I was about to try and do a view from. A quick one. Until I realised, oh, actually, not a good idea. Because the last bus is in about 50 minutes. Well, then I thought it was 30 minutes and then realised it was a bit, you know, a bit more time, but not much time. So, yeah, it's just, I don't think people realise how much, I mean, I I, I guess they do realise that they, how much freedom they have with their cars. The problem is, there's also so much, you know, limitations and also... Planet, planet damage and green things with cars, I hate them. But, you know, I wouldn't drive. I think I wouldn't drive now even if I could. I mean, I learned three times. Well, I did the test three times and failed three times. But I do actually know how to drive. I'm not very good at passing the test. I know this because I did... I did both... I learned on both automatics and... petrol cars... <sighs> Diesel automatics and petrols geared. And, you know, I knew how to drive. I do know how to drive. I just then I just get too nervous for the test. And then it got to a point where I was like, I moved to London. And I was like, well, why? I don't like driving. I never liked learning. I didn't like driving. I just think it's horrible. So 
bring on the self-driving cars, I see. But even then, I would be unhappy with having a self-driving car unless it's somehow not like you know, like that. I was looking at the people opposite the bus stop who have a cottage right next to the road, and the road is a classic sort of Dorset motorway, so two lane, but. You know, a car every second. And that's pretty horrible to put on anyone. And I'm not really happy with that. Anyway, I've got to go and do some work. I might post it as part of this or not. Probably do post the quick 30 minutes that I did. I also did a drawing in. I also did do a drawing in. A quick drawing as the bus, you know, similarly as the uh, waiting for the bus in Bridport of the clock tower, which I might go and finish at some point, or I might not. It depends again if I get str- <laughs> stranded in or have time in Bridport. But I have to pick up this Amazon thing, so I will plan to be in Bridport tomorrow uh, at some point. You know, I walk there. I mean, the the, the the kiosk is twenty four hours, so you know, I can get there whenever. So that's if it arrives. Uh, what I'll do it on Sunday when I go through. I'd rather not do that though. But yes. So hey, that's a lot busier now than the campsite. Obviously, maybe a lot of you are coming for the carnival. Anyway, speak to you soon. An addendum from a windy hill above Sea Town on the way to Thorncombe Beacon the next day after. But last night, I, after the bus sort of panic, I decided to do some work on the beach. And that's the image you can see in the details. It's a graphite. I, used to, I tried to use the non-water soluble graphite and got them mixed up so I ended up using the water soluble graphite because the idea was to use the graphite and then lay over some watercolour and then it ended up being like oh dear it's all mixing in so it's a bit more darker than I thought um, but that's the Lyra Lyra water soluble 9B and there's another piece an ink piece it's girl's going to be watercolour, but I just left it as ink of golden cap. Being less golden at, at night. But I got very cold. <laughs> I, you know, it was, you know, even with my fleece on, I got very cold on the beach. And so I sort of called it a day. I went and cooked some pasta in the dark, pretty much, or gloom. Um, that was alright, although I have to say Lloyd Grossman should stick to making television shows. His his uh, his sauces are a bit crap. And they were, were okay, but there were lots of lumps of vegetables in them and stuff. There was a bolognese, it was all I had in the spa shop at Chidiuk, or Chidiuk. Um Which annoyingly then I went to Bridport and thought well, I could have got it here, but actually the, the nice mushroom sauce that I got from M&S oh I know posh well the thing is if I'm f- fucking slumming it which I am then I take nice food I'm not going to have bargain budget food if, if, if the avoidance if the whole point is to avoid spending money on pub meals which I've, I've done bar one very good I had a fish and chips yesterday but uh, so I'm very good at not not eating out um then make sure it's tasty and nice and not shit. So uh, I've been sort of upscaling the food options where I can. I mean, Bridport really needs them. Doesn't seem to have M&S. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised the little Waitrose, and it was very little really for Waitrose. Um, I'm surprised they didn't have. All they had was tomato sauces. All tomato sauces, like Dolmio, their own. It's all the same stuff. So you know. But I really had, there was very nice. What I got in uh, M&S in Weymouth is this mushroom pasta sauce. It's really lovely. But I'm not, 
it doesn't seem like Waitrose, or at least all small Waitrose, uh, copied it. And I've got far too much pasta now. <laughs> so I might need to get some more sauce. Because <laughs> I, I, I went to Morrison's and got this box of pasta, of gluten-free pasta, because, again, Waitrose only had the fuselier in. I can't stand fuselier. I can get fuselier at the spa here. I don't like the texture. But the... Yeah, so... And then there's like five minutes, oh, that's all right. And I was like, I poured it into the bag because the box is going to fall apart in about five seconds. And it was like, oh, crap, I've got a lot of pasta. <laughs> so I better like pasta. But, yeah, I've been partly here just eating lots of things, trying to re- replace them, but also just kind of reducing how much crap I have to carry. And still the camping gas goes on. <laughs> it's like, really... <laughs> You know, it's a lot lighter than it was, which is good. But still, it's like of all the yeah. anyway. So I'm going to post this episode. I have to say, last night and this morning is this. Uh, I don't know. I think after Golden Cap and the drenching I got there, and then yesterday's sort of bus chaos. Um, which means that I'm going to try and move, to, as I said, uh, the other side of Bridport. So I've got the, at least got the seven o'clock-ish buses. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, I hit a wall. I'm not totally sure why. Kind of a, why am I doing this kind of depression wall? And, uh, there are a couple of reasons for that some personal but yeah I'm not totally sure what that was about or is about I'll find out I have some idea (laughs) I mean the idea of this is to try and expand this into though I need to be shorter episodes seriously um, expand this into a sort of a bigger thing where I travel around and do stuff <laughs> you know and and so it's not just trying to sell the works it's sort of a bit like an artistic travel guide that's the idea I'm not sure it's working so as well as I'd like certainly I need to refresh my old research <sighs> but I will be back to Abbotsbury especially when I'm going to move hopefully that way if not then it will cut the holiday short but I can't imagine there's nowhere I can stay tomorrow night but we'll see and um, yeah and also I want to go back to uh, St. Gabriel's Chapel, the ruined chapel preferably not over Golden Cap I think I found ways from inland that are not so scary well it's not just scary it's just, I just don't really want to walk over Golden Cap again <laughs> you know done that <laughs> it's one of those things you do and you go oh I've done that, ok that's good tick, I don't think I'll do that again which in a way it's a bit sad but it's kind of it's that kind of walk where it's like yeah I'd rather not do this again but it's not so horrible like it's oh my god but it's like just a bit too (sighs) a bit too uh, exhausting to do and there's not really there's some some interesting stuff up there but it's not apart from the chapel which is on the other side anyway there's not really much up there. But you can totally see why they call it Golden Cap, because today, well, when the sun shines on it, you actually see a sort of an orange G yellow. The, the, sort of the, the earth at the top is an orange yellow. I'm sure the geologists will tell you why. But, yeah, that's why. I assume, but that's, I mean, it's the obvious, obvious answer. That it's got a golden cap. It's, it's got this sort of yellowish... Just sort of orangish top to it. 
It's only a while, so I hope this is going to be another long podcast. Sorry. I'm stop apologising for that. I'm trying to make them shorter or more frequent. One of the two. Um, but this one got delayed because of the... I hadn't taken pictures of the work from last night. And I hadn't taken pictures of the work I did from the bus. Which was going to be the episode artwork. But then I decided to do the... Uh, the image of the dinghy on Sea Town Beach, which, by the way, it says it said looks like it says eight. Uh, is it nine eight? Uh, nine eight nine eight. Hum hum. It's actually upside down. So it's W W H Weymouth, and then the same round. So it's palindrome and that bit. But but yes, I'm fascinated by that by that dinghy. There are a couple of dinghies on the beach like that. So anyway, I'll speak to you soon.